Welcome to the third segment of the systems documentation tutorial. In the first segment, we read through a process narrative and created the entity activity table that you see on the left here. In the second segment, we identified the information and non-information processing activities. Remember, we bolded the information processing activities. This allows us to easily identify the external entities that will show up on our context diagram. In this segment, we are going to create the context diagram. Before we begin, let's review some concepts critical to understand the purpose of the context diagram and how it relates to the other types of data flow diagrams. First, remember that the purpose of the context diagram is to define the system boundaries. That is, it shows the data that flows in and out of the high-level process from and to the external entities. Now this implies that internal entities will never be explicitly drawn on the context diagram. The internal entities are implicitly contained inside the one process bubble on the diagram. The context diagram is a logical diagram and always contains only one process bubble. A logical diagram describes the actions that are happening, while a physical diagram captures who or what is performing those actions. So logical and physical diagrams complement each other, but they convey different information. Importantly, logical diagrams have different layers of abstraction. The context diagram is the highest level of abstraction. That's why it contains only a single process bubble. Lower level data flow diagrams provide more details about the process and represent exploded views of the context diagram. You've seen this concept before on maps. Maps will often explode details of, say for example, the city center in a magnified box to the side. On maps, it's understood that the magnified portion is not adding to the map or is not a separate map it's only showing more details for a specified portion of the map. This is the same concept with the abstracted layers of logical DFDs. Now let's begin creating our context diagram. To simplify your learning curve with Visio, I have provided you with Visio files that contain all of the DFD symbols. So you can simply copy and paste them as needed. A context diagram never contains data stores, so we're going to delete the data store from our template. As we've already established, the context diagram contains only a single process bubble. So let's place that bubble in the center of our diagram. Now I know what you're thinking. Hmm, what should we label it? Well, on a context diagram, we always label the bubble with the name of the process we are documenting. In this case, we are dealing with the Suprina Athletic Supply order entry process. So we'll label it the order entry process. I can do that by double clicking on the label and typing in order entry process. Notice that I did not number the bubble. We do number the bubbles on lower level logical DFDs and physical DFDs, but not on context diagrams. Now the next step is to add the external entities. If you remember from the last segment, we determined from the entity activity table that the customer and the warehouse were the only two external entities. They were the only entities that did not perform any processing activity, any information processing activity. So you can see over here on the left, the customer gives the order to the sales rep. It's not bolded. It's not an information processing activity. And then if we scroll down, the warehouse also doesn't have any bolded activity associated with it. And so let's add these two entities to our context diagram. I'll go ahead and copy and paste another external entity. We'll place one on the right. We'll place one on the left, and then let's label them. Double click, 
We'll call this one customer. Then we'll double click on the right box and call that warehouse. Now we just need to connect the external entities to the system, that is, to the process bubble. Let's look back into the activity table to determine what is it that flows from the customer to the system. And we can see here that the customer gives the order to the sales rep who's inside the system. So we are going to take this data flow and connect it to the customer and stretch it over here to our process bubble. And then we're going to double click and label this the sales order. Now we'll copy our data flow. Now we need to determine what flows between the warehouse and the context diagram or the process bubble. And if we go back here and scroll down in our table, we see that the headquarter computer sends the picking ticket to the warehouse. So we're sending a picking ticket to the warehouse. We'll label that. Now notice that I labeled the data flows with nouns. Data flows will always be labeled with nouns whether it's in logical DFDs, in physical DFDs, or in document flowcharts. We're always labeling the data flows with nouns. So resist the temptation to label data flows with verbs. That's incorrect. So that completes our context diagram. Before we end, let's review some of the important points. First, a context diagram is a lo logical diagram, not a physical diagram. Its purpose is simply to define the system boundaries. So therefore, it contains a single process bubble and external entities. And that process bubble is labeled with the process we are documenting. In our case, it was the order entry process. Now, in general, with data flow diagrams, data flows in all of the diagrams are always labeled with nouns, not verbs. So if you can resist the temptation to label data flows with verbs and to put more than a single bubble on the context diagram, you are well on your way to mastering this step of systems documentation. That concludes this segment. In the next segment, we're going to show you how to create physical data flow diagrams.